morning. God is good. And all the time, God is good indeed. Welcome you to Bridgeport United Methodist Church on this Christ the King Sunday, November 26th in the year 2023, as we come uh, rapidly, it feels, to the end of this 2023 year. We gather here this morning as a Matthew 25 church, a church in service to the least, the last, the lonely, and the left out, sharing God's love and grace poured out for us. Jesus said in Matthew 25, and we'll hear this in a bit in our scripture lesson, that when you do it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do it unto me. So we gather now to equip ourselves with the message of hope in Jesus Christ, that others might come to know and experience the saving grace of our Lord. It is in this spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ, who brings peace and hope to us, that we are a forgiven people, healed and enabled to be a part of the ministries of the compassion ministries of God's world. As children of God, let's stand together now and proclaim our faith in this morning's call to worship printed on your bulletin. Christ Jesus, friend of the poor, the meek and the merciful, has been enthroned above all authority and power in this world and the world that is to come. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. God has placed everything under Christ's wounded feet, appointed the one who wore a crown of thorns as the supreme head of the church, his body. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Give thanks and praise his loving name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of the lost and lonely, God of the secure and confident, gather us now into your fold that we may be healed and transformed. Guide us in your world that we may be part of ministries of healing and hope. Help us to see that following your mandate to feed the hungry, Bring nourishment to those who thirst. Offer clothing to those in need. Visit the sick and those who are imprisoned. Welcome the stranger. Any activity of service, Lord, help us to see it as an act of great privilege and joy. We praise you for the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who boldly bids us care for each other and become those who would bring good news of peace for all. Bring the joy of this day into our hearts, a new day, Flood our lives with your words of hope that our ministries may glow with delight at serving you by serving others. Bless this church, Lord, as we grow and continue to learn what you would have us do. Cause us to be a haven of peace and hope in this world that so desperately needs it. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's share in our hymn of praise this morning, Rejoice the Lord is King. That's number 715.
Thank you. You may be seated. So a few announcements here this morning for you. Please always want to encourage you to continue. Too much espresso this morning. Continue to visit the website and our social media pages regularly, especially as we go through uh, the season of Advent, which begins next weekend. Um, So an exciting time in our church. Be sure to check for announcements in our weekly devotions on our social media or website. Uh, Stewardship 2024, Generous God, Generous People is the theme for our 2024 emphasis. We continue to encourage you, if you have not already, to return a pledge card that we may uh, best plan for the use of our resources, be good stewards of all of our resources together for the coming year. Uh, You can find a pledge card there in your pews, or you can ask an usher, and they will provide you one. Thank you for all of you who have responded to that. A special note of gratitude for all those who contributed to our Thanksgiving food packages for many local families right here in our community. Your generosity was no doubt a great blessing for those families. And we're now blessed with an opportunity to minister through the Angel Tree uh, children. If you would like to adopt a child this year, please look for the display in the narthex. You can choose a child, put your name there on the sign-up sheet, and take a child's tag with the attached plastic bag there and an instruction sheet so we will know exactly what to do there. Please drop those off by December 11th in the narthex. If you're dropping it off that Sunday, December 11th, you can bring it right here in the entryway. But if you want to drop it off any other weekday, you may do that. Just bring those bags to the office if you choose to do that. United Women in Faith is inviting all women of the church to join the United Women of Faith. That's uh, Sunday, December 3rd, so next weekend, next Sunday, from 2 to 4 p.m. for a celebration of the carols. There's other information there in your bulletin that you can see on the activities they have planned uh, for that day. Also, our Women's Proverbs 31 Circle is starting a college ministry, sending care packages to students throughout the school year. They would like to have your college student's school address, uh, so please email that to the church office. That uh, office email is in the bulletin. Please be sure to do that so we can bless our college-bound students. So lots of activity here at your church. Check out the bulletin for those I've mentioned as well as others. If you have a prayer request on behalf of yourself or another this morning, uh, please complete a blue prayer request card that you can find there in your pew. During our final hymn, our prayer stewards will come and collect those and offer prayer on our behalf. We also take this time in our service to give thanks for the many blessings in our lives and return a portion of that back to the Lord. You may choose to give using the baskets in the entryway. You can mail in your contributions, or you can go online, bridgeportumc.org, and there is an e-giving option there on the website. No doubt many blessings to be thankful for among us today, your presence being one of them, your gifts, talents, all a blessing. So let's share together this morning in praising God as it's printed there in your bulletin. Sing we to our King above the doxology. The tune is a familiar tune, the Easter hymn, and the words are printed in your bulletin. Let's stand and sing the doxology together. seated. Our choir and accompaniments come this morning to bless us with our word and music, Who is He?
Let's stand together this morning for our scripture lesson from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it unto me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it unto me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, good morning, church. It is good to see you all in the house of the Lord. Hopefully you've recovered from this Thanksgiving week. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get a full review of the uh, pecan smoked turkey. Not, it's a negative review, I think. Uh, so uh, not a positive review there, So, uh, if you were, were wondering. Uh, but it is great to see you. It is Christ the King Sunday. On Christ the King Sunday, we celebrate the Lordship of Christ, that He rules and reigns over heaven and earth. And uh, it is kind of like the New Year's Eve of the church. This is the last day of the church year. Uh, next Sunday, we begin a whole new church year with the first Sunday of Advent, and we'll be taking that journey as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. So we look forward uh, to this Advent season with you as we take that journey together. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, we are thankful that as we've gathered together in your name, that you are here in our midst. And I pray that as we explore your word together, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would change our lives, that you would help us to live and to be the disciples and the church that you are calling us to be. May it be so in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Do you like surprises? How many of you like surprises? Um, I'm a little conflicted about surprises. Actually, Melissa will say I don't like surprises at all. She's already shaking her head. I, I, I don't like them. Uh, I like surprising others. You know, I like giving the unexpected gift or dropping in for the unexpected visit, but I don't like being surprised myself. That might be a bit hypocritical, but there you go. I, I, don't, I think it's that I, I don't like surprises because I like being prepared. I like feeling ready, at least as ready as I can be for what's coming, and surprises undermine that kind of confidence. But I ask that question about surprises today because our passage this morning turns on this matter of surprise. Jesus is speaking a parable, and the parable begins with this victory hymn that is set to Christ in the future. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, it begins. And then the camera pulls back to encompass the entire scene. And we now see all the nations of the earth, row after row of humanity, is gathered before the throne of the Son of Man, before the throne of Christ. And just as a shepherd in that time would sometimes divide the flock, separating the sheep from the goats, So the Son of Man divides the people into the sheep on the right hand, make sure I get the right hand, the right hand, and the goats on the left. And the Son of Man begins pronouncing judgment upon both the sheep and the goats. 
And at first glance, this talk about judging sheep and goats, it sounds like a county fair or 4-H club, right? But the stakes in Jesus' story are much higher. Now for the sheep, it is all good news. It is all good news for the sheep. They are given a divine blessing. They're revealed as the true heirs of God's kingdom because they provided food and drink, because they gave hospitality and clothing and care for the Son of Man. As for the goats, however, it's not such good news. Someone said it might not be so good to be Tom Brady. But here they are. The goats are condemned into the eternal fire because they have supplied none of those ministries, even though the Son of Man was hungry and thirsty, even though He was a stranger and naked and sick and in prison. So there you have it. Those who did righteous, one side, and it's blessing. Those who didn't do the righteous acts to the other side, they are condemned. If that's all there were to this parable, that those who do good deeds are rewarded and those who don't are punished, it would be a fairly conventional morality tale. It would be the sort of story that can be found frequently in the religious literature of many cultures. But that's not all there is to the parable. And that's where the element of surprise comes in. Because notice in this parable that both those identified as sheep and those identified as goats are surprised by what Jesus says. <coughs> they are both surprised by what Jesus says. Notice what they say. Lord, when was it that we saw you? Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty? Lord, when was it that we saw you naked or in prison? When was it, Lord, that we saw you in need? Both groups, both the sheep and the goats, express their surprise, their shock, when Jesus commends or condemns their behavior. In fact, the sheep are as confounded as the goats. But what exactly are they surprised by? Are they surprised that they acted in a righteous way or an unrighteous way? No, they're not surprised. Neither one of them denies their behavior. Neither one says, oh, you're wrong. We did, did or didn't do that. No, both are surprised by what? By their failure to recognize the Son of Man. Both are surprised by their failure to recognize Jesus. Or to put it more clearly, they're surprised by where Jesus hangs out. No one expected to see Jesus in the face of the disadvantaged, the poor. No one expected to see Jesus in the face of the imprisoned and those who are in need. And maybe we're the same way. When we think of God, we typically think in terms of power and might and glory and all the rest. That God is separate. He's aloof. He's glorious, separate from all the pain and agony of this world. And indeed, the parable begins by describing the coming of the Son of Man in glory, to sit on His throne, attended by angels. And all of that scene, it only seems to reinforce our preconceptions about the way God is. But maybe Jesus is deliberately setting us up. Maybe Jesus is hoping that we'll begin to think this way only to upend our expectations. Because in the rest of this parable, that same kingly figure identifies with the least of these. And we begin to have to look for God, not in places of power. And so this parable calls into question where we look for God, and it reorients us to discover and to experience God's presence in our lives more deeply than ever before. In this parable, Jesus promises to always be with and for those who are in greatest need, which means that if we want to experience God's presence fully, if we want to experience God's presence deeply and truly, then we will look for God in the need of those around us and in our own need as well. God is among us in the last, the least, the lonely, and the left out, as we say, each and every Sunday. Now, I realize that that's not what we expect. We think of God as being all-knowing, all-powerful, all-just. He is the creator of the cosmos. He is the author of all life. But that's not where Jesus invites us to meet or be met by God. And this act of humility, this act of condescension, it takes us by surprise. It upsets our expectations, and it disrupts our plans. But maybe it shouldn't. Maybe it shouldn't. Because the God that we know in Jesus Christ seems to delight in such surprises. 
After all, God didn't come to reign over humanity at Athens or Rome or any of the other major cities where one would expect God to arrive, but rather, surprise, God came to identify with us by being born in a lowly village called Bethlehem in the form of a vulnerable infant. And God didn't come to conquer the world with military or political might, but instead, surprise, Christ overcame in the scandal, the shame, and the pain of the cross. The cross was his throne. And the shock of this parable is that no one, no one, not the goats and not even the sheep, recognized Christ because they assumed that the majestic, triumphant Lord of all time would surely appear as a powerful presence in history. And so they missed God. But that isn't God's way in the world. As Isaiah describes it, He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with grief. And so God continues to come where we least expect God to be. God comes in the plight of the homeless. God comes on the side of the poor. God comes in the face of the needy. God comes in the company of the imprisoned. And that's not all. If we're willing to suspend our expectations if we're willing to live in the surprising reality of the God that we know in Jesus Christ, then we are invited to meet God not just in some distant eternal life, not just in some otherworldly reality, but we are invited to meet God now, here and now, in the concrete and real needs of our neighbors, just as they are invited to meet and be blessed by God as they tend to our needs as well. In other words, the God that we know in Jesus is revealed not in power, but in vulnerability, not in might, but in brokenness, and not in judgment, but in mercy. It should be noted that Jesus shares this parable on the way to the cross. Indeed, this parable represents his last words before the beginning of his passion. In the very next verse, Matthew begins the passion account with these words. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, He said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So in a way, this parable is summarizing all that Jesus had done and all that Jesus had taught. This parable is summarizing all that he has been saying all along through his teaching and his actions. And it's pointing to what he will soon say in the cross. And that message is the same throughout. That message is this. That God loves us and all the world so much that God has decided to identify with us fully and completely. God loves us and the world so much that God has decided to identify with us fully and completely. And so we recognize God most easily in the face of our neighbor. We meet God in the acts of mercy and service that we offer and that are offered to us. And we live in the blessing of God as we seek to serve as Christ served. Indeed, when the king addresses those that are called the sheep, he says to them, come You who are blessed of my Father. You who are blessed of my Father. That phrase, blessed of my Father, it's an important line. We should take note of that. It's not just a throwaway line. Because earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount begins with the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes begin with these words, this same word, blessed, blessed. In fact, this parable corresponds to the Beatitudes as bookends for Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Matthew. The Beatitudes are Jesus' first words of teaching in Matthew's Gospel, and this is his last. In the Beatitudes, Jesus identifies the blessed ones as the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and those who suffer for righteousness' sake. Apparently, Jesus has the same group in mind when he describes the sheep in this parable. Those who are blessed in the Beatitudes and the sheep in this parable are the same people. Those who find value in identification with and care for the most vulnerable. Like the Beatitudes, this parable describes the essential values and practices that define those who follow Jesus Christ. And so... As the 21st century church of Jesus Christ, we are sent out into the world on a vital mission. Our mission is to bear witness 
to the gospel, to the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus said that the good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world to, to all nations. But this gospel, it's more than just words. Yes, words are part of it. But rep as representatives of God's kingdom, we proclaim the message not just with our lips, but we also must live by and demonstrate the values of the kingdom in our actions. Because at the end of the day, the question that we must answer and the question that this parable points to is this. How did we respond to human need? How did we respond to human need? That's the ultimate question. That's the transformative question. That's the transformative question for us as disciples, as individuals, and the transformative question for us as a church. How did we respond to human need? As those who claim to follow Jesus, we are called to be God's transformative agents in the world. And so a Matthew 25 church, a Matthew 25 church is not just a place that collects and preserves people for heaven. A Matthew 25 church is not just God's waiting room for the hereafter. No, a Matthew 25 church is God's transformative agent in the world today. A Matthew 25 church teaches what the kingdom of God is all about. A Matthew 25 church practices the vision and the values of the kingdom of God as we live in the here and now among the kingdoms of the world. A Matthew 25 church doesn't wait for eternity to worship Jesus, but they worship Jesus now by the way in which they live and the way in which they treat their neighbor. A Matthew 25 church proclaims the gospel by living in this world as Jesus lived. As his disciples, we are called to be like our teacher. And how, what was our teacher like? He was humble. We are called to be humble, to become like children. Our teacher showed hospitality to those in need. We are called to show hospitality to those in need. In Matthew's gospel, you can read through it again. I invite you to do that this week. As you read through the gospel, you'll note that where you find Jesus, it's among those who are harassed and helpless. It's among those who need compassion. It's among those who are like a sheep without a shepherd. And a church that is faithful, a church that is faithful to Jesus Christ, would be found in precisely the same place. It seems like a hard challenge. It seems like hard work. But this is surprisingly good news, because the good news is this, that God is with us, that God is with us here and now, that God is revealed in our neighbor, that God is revealed in the fellowship of broken people we call the church, that God's presence is made available to us in those seemingly small and, and what often seem like insignificant gestures of mercy that we offer and that are offered to us each and every day. This might not be where we expect God to show up, but it's just where we need God to be. And this good news of God's unexpected mercy and grace may just be the best surprise that we'll ever receive. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, we thank you today for this gospel, for this good news. On this Christ the King Sunday, we are reminded that indeed you are the King. The King that will return in judgment separating the sheep from the goats. And at first, that seems like bad news. But Lord, it is good news. Because in this parable of the separation of the sheep and the goats, you show us about the true nature of your kingdom. You show us where you are truly found. And we thank you that you are not the God that is just a high and a loft and away from our needs, but that you are present, that you come and you live among us in the midst of our brokenness, and that you meet us, Lord, as we serve neighbors and as our neighbors serve us and as we meet the needs of those around us, as we, we feed the hungry, as we give drink to those who are thirsty, as we clothe the naked, as we do all these things of, of visiting, Lord, You are there in those seemingly small and insignificant acts. And we thank You today that we don't have to wait for eternity to encounter Your presence, but that we can see it today in the face of our neighbor. Help us, God, to be the disciples and the church that you're calling us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. Our hymn of response is number 166 in the United Methodist hymnal. All praise to thee for thou, O King divine. As we stand and sing today, the altars are open. Maybe you're in need. The Lord is here to meet you with his compassion. Maybe you want to commit to being the kind of disciple and the kind of church that, that this parable calls us to be. The altars are open, and God is here to meet us. Won't you come as we sing? Mm -hmm. 
Let's now boldly declare our faith as contained in this affirmation of faith from Philippians chapter 2. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess to the glory of God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we pray this morning, feel free to lift up aloud or in your hearts those joys or concerns that you might have on your heart. Let us pray. O oh God, on this Christ the King Sunday, we rejoice in your kingdom and in the reign of Christ. And we are thankful for the kind of God that you are. That you are a God, as we sang and as we saw in the Scriptures today, that comes and dwells and lives among us. Lord, that You humbled Yourself in order that You might show us the full extent of Your love and that You might be enthroned upon the throne that was never expected, upon the throne of the cross. We rejoice in that good news today. And we thank You for all the joys as we come out of this Thanksgiving week. So many blessings that we are filled with gratitude. 
We thank You, God, for giving to us and for Your faithfulness each and every day. We thank You for birthdays, for anniversaries, for milestones that are being celebrated. We thank You for time with family and friends. And we just give You thanks and praise for all that You have given us. If you have joys that you would like to share at this moment, please feel free to lift those up. We thank you for safe travels during this holiday season. God, as we saw in our scripture passage today, we are reminded that you are close to those in need. We pray today, Lord, especially for those in need among us and those in need in our community, those who hunger and thirst, those who need clothing, Lord, those who are sick and imprisoned. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be your hands and feet extended to them, that we would share the love of Christ. We pray especially, Lord, for those who are ill this day, for those who need your presence and healing. We ask that you would be near to them. We pray for those in the hospital, that you would surround them with your presence, for those who are recovering at home and facing various trials. We lift up those who will be having surgeries this week and those who are recovering from surgeries. Would you surround them, O God, with your presence? If you'd like to lift up names of individuals who need God's healing, would you please feel free to do that? Oh God, may your healing presence be felt among all of these individuals, we pray. We thank you that you're the God who is near to those who are brokenhearted. We pray for those who are going through grief, Lord. Grief that is as a result of separation from loved ones. Whether that be various situations in our world, whether that be death that separates us. We pray, Lord, for those who mourn and grieve. As we see in the Scriptures that you say, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort, comfort those who grieve this day and show them, Lord, that you are the good shepherd who walks alongside of them in the midst of their grief. We especially pray for those who will be facing this first holiday season without loved ones, without loved ones there alongside of them, we pray, Lord, that you would give your presence in the midst of that grief. If you'd like to lift up individuals who are going through seasons of grief, please feel free to lift up those names. God, we pray for Norma Ladd at the loss of her husband Earl, and we ask that you would comfort Norma, as only you can. God, we pray for the kingdoms of this world. We look around and we see a lot of hostility and war and violence. We thank you that even amid that violence and amid those hostilities, that your presence is still there, that you are still at work. And it's in the seemingly small and insignificant acts of compassion and care that your presence and that your love is made manifest. And so, God, we pray for those who are providing relief and those who are providing comfort, and those who are providing care, for those who are in danger, for those who are injured, for those who need. Meet them, God. Help them. Empower them for that work. We thank you, Lord, that you're there in the Ukraine and that you're there in Israel. We thank you for the release of hostages. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to help those types of actions to continue. We 
We pray for our own nation, Lord, for our leaders. Would You give them wisdom and guidance? Would You help those at every level of government, federal, state, local level? Would You help them to keep in mind those who are vulnerable, those who are in need, as they make decisions? Lord, we lift up our church. We rejoice, Lord, in this church that you have raised up here in Bridgeport. We thank you that you've given us a vision of being a Matthew 25 church. And I pray, Lord, that we would truly be the kind of church that you've called us to be and that we would live into that vision of being a ministry with and for the least, the last, the lonely, and the left out. As we have saw, I've seen in the Scriptures today, God, we know that You are a God who is made manifest, that Your presence is made known in acts of mercy and kindness and compassion. And Lord, that's the kind of people that we want to be, the kind of people that manifest Your presence, that point to Your kingdom by our words and our actions. And on this Christ the King Sunday, we thank You that we can reflect the Lordship of Christ by the way in which we share His love in the world. And as we prepare, Lord, for the season of Advent, we pray that You would open our eyes to the needs of those around us and help us, Lord, to be faithful, to be empowered by Your Spirit to walk in Your love and Your grace and Your mercy. We thank You and we praise You for all of these things, giving You thanks and gratitude in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us join in our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy One, enthroned in glory over all creation, You are a shepherd to the lost and the least. We, your people, acclaim you. We praise you. We exalt you. We bless your holy name. It is your love that is revealed in the life and death of Jesus. It is your power that is seen in his resurrection. It is your majesty that is made known by his ascension into heaven to be at your side. Enable us, O God, to keep your power and your love and your majesty in our minds. Help us to be your obedient followers. Teach us to see your face among the poor, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, and visiting those who are sick or in prison, so that we may share in your eternal realm, prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, who reigns with justice, compassion, and love. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for your presence here today. It is good to see you, and I look forward to celebrating as we come back next week and preparing our hearts for the Christmas season through Advent. And we'll be making that journey together, so uh, we'll uh, look forward to that time. Um, I do want to mention, as we said in our uh, time of prayer, to remember Norma Ladd, as she lost her husband Earl this week, and so we will have a service here Thursday at uh, 12 noon, and the visitation will be from 10 to 12 here at the church just prior to the service. So uh, please remember Norma and her family. Let's stand and sing in our closing, share in our closing hymn. Uh, number 581 in the United Methodist Hymn, the Lord whose love through humble service.
have heard the good news, the surprisingly good news, that we encounter God's presence, that we encounter Jesus in the face of our neighbor. So let us go forth this day to love God and to serve our neighbor. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.